Hey there, Tamara by today. It's on air fashion and lifestyle expert Sydney Sadik. Happy Friday, you guys. We are so excited to be closing out the week with the breakout star of the brand new Netflix hit Ginny and Georgia. And that is Sarah Wasteglass, you guys. She plays everybody's favorite on a camera BFF these days. And that is Maxine. We could not be more excited to have Sarah joining us today. And as always, if you guys have questions for our guest, please submit them in the comments and we will get to them live as we go. Thank you guys so much for joining us over here on Tomorrow by Today on this Friday afternoon. We are connecting with Sarah right now and are so excited to get this conversation started. I mean, this truly is one of our favorite shows right now. It has been so fun to binge watch and I know you guys are good about Ginny and Georgia too. This is our day to learn more about Sarah and here we go. Hi. How Hello. are you, Sarah? I'm good. How are you? I'm so good. Thank you so much for joining us on Tomorrow by Today. Thank you for having me. I'm super, super pumped. I'm very oh, honored. I love it. We are closing out the week with you, which we're so thrilled about. And Ginny and Georgia, I mean, this is like a huge hit right now. What was your reaction when you heard that you landed the role of Maxine? Oh, God, I, I just recently told this story. So I, I wanted this so bad. Like, I've never loved a role so much in my life. And, um, and I, I was asleep, in, or I wasn't asleep. I was in my bed, and I just finished crying because I thought I wasn't going to get the role. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and then I looked over at my phone, and I got a text that I did, and that, like, just changed everything. And I've been, like, literally giddy since then because I'm just I can't believe that I got to do this and I, I just feel so lucky every day and um so my reaction was like my world just changed forever I was I was thrilled <laughs> that is amazing I mean fans just have loved watching you of course people have known you since your days to Negrassi and so much more but this has just been such a major moment when you say that life has changed what are some of those tangible things that you've noticed since getting this well it's funny you ask us literally just now had a, had a very funny experience. So my grandmother's trying to watch this live and I have to teach her how to use Instagram because she's 87 and she's alone in Alliston. And um, so I'm like, I try to do a test run on my Instagram so that she could, I could like be on the phone with her and tell her like, this is how you do it. This is where you go. Yeah. And like 25,000 people watched the test run. And I was like, no, no, I don't watch this. <laughs> strictly just me trying to teach my grandmother how to do something um and like people are just so great like I, I, there's not a, a 10 minute increment where I don't hear somebody saying that they love the show or that they that think I'm kind and it's like it's just the response has been incredible and I, I still can't believe it I, I truly feel like I'm still in shock oh my goodness <laughs> what a story that is and like props to you and for your grandmother for like trying to get on Instagram today did she make it on did it work I think my sister and my mom are trying to teach her like as oh. we speak. So I hope she makes it. I think she will. She's really with it. So I, I have faith that she I love it. That is so <laughs> awesome. Well, Sarah, what initially gravitated you towards the role of Maxine? What appealed to you? Um, her energy. I, I think the script is so well written. Like I just immediately read it and heard the voice and and it was just so distinct. Um and Max is someone who's incredibly open and loving and and so energetic. And, and I feel like that's not something that I've ever gotten to do before on screen. And, and she's so funny. And so that was something that I obviously loved. And it gave me the opportunity to be funny and make people laugh. And so that was the main thing that really kind of made me love her and fall in love with her and the more I I got to spend time with her and you know shooting it just I fell even more in love so she's been the role of a lifetime I love it and clearly everyone has just been so excited to just watch the character evolve I mean you're 22 you have been acting for so many years how would you say you originally you know got inspired to become an actress to begin with I think um I mean, I was so young, it, it wasn't really like I, you know, signed myself up for an agent because I was six. Um, <laughs> I think my parents just saw that I really loved performing and I really loved making people laugh, making people smile. Um, and so I kind of just fell into it that way and they signed me up for it. And, and I, that's how I kind of got started. 
Um, and then I took a break for a while just because I was missing so much school and I was losing some friends because I'd go away to shoot a project and then I'd come back and all my friends would have new friends and, you know, it kind of sucked a little, but, uh, I took a break and then when I decided I wanted to go back to it, it wasn't my parents' decision and it wasn't anyone's decision but mine. And that was, I think, in incredibly important just for like my career because now I know that I'm in it because I love it and not because anyone else loves it, but because it's truly a passion of mine. You know, you can definitely tell it is in your blood because you are just so talented at it. But when you were even just filming Degrassi, like you were also in college, you were in the thick of balancing both elements and aspects of your life. Other than the friend component, like what would you say was the biggest challenge? Because you said in interviews that people were trying to discourage you from graduating on time. Yes. Yeah, that was tough. I had someone like in grade four, I was at an art school and one of my teachers was like, you shouldn't be doing this. Like you shouldn't be at an art school because like you need to be here and be present. And I was like, I'm literally doing the thing that we're all supposed to want to be doing. So that's very strange. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the hardest part was just learning to prioritize and time management because um, I shot Ginny in Georgia while I was still in university and I had a full course load. And so I'd have to be like completing, you know, hours and hours of readings and work while also completing hours and hours of reading scripts and memorizing and prepping. Um, and so it was all about like time management for me. Sleep was extremely important. Um, <laughs> it all kind of seems like a blur, but at the end of the day, I did graduate and I'm so thankful for that and, and grateful. And, and now the show is out in the world, which is amazing. And everyone seems to really love it, which makes me so happy. And yeah, it makes it all worth it. They definitely do. What are you hoping that people take away the most from your character of Maxine? Um, I think Max is a pretty incredible character. I actually feel like every character on this show is just so well written. And, you know, I've had a lot of conversations with the creator of the show, Sarah, and she, um, she has this beautiful way of putting it, but she really just wants people to watch the show and feel seen. And I think that's stunning. I, I, I don't think there's anything more beautiful than the natural narrative of life. And I feel like our show really captures what it's like right now. And and there's just so many topics that we cover. And I feel like a lot of people have reached out and said that they feel that they finally feel seen on screen. And that's a beautiful thing. I, I'm so glad I'm a part of it. I feel like you can't ask for anything more than to have that kind of a reaction from people. And I'm curious, like in comparison to your personal high school experience, how similar or different were the storylines on the show to what you went through? You know what? Pretty similar. I really? Mean, I, yeah, I think that's part of why I fell in love with the script. It was the first time that I was seeing friendships that kind of mimicked what it was like in high school and, you know, how some of these friendships can be toxic and, and you know, not not everything is clean cut and, and everyone makes mistakes. Like, that is, like, when you, I see so many characters in high school who just, like, do the right thing all the time. And I'm just like, that's so not true. <laughs> we were right. all messing up all the time and making mistakes because that's the time. That's the time when you're supposed to do that. So um, I feel like my high school experience was actually kind of similar. I just... I, it was tough to make friends and it, it's tough to just like grow up and find your identity. I think that's like a really, really tough thing. And so that's why I really loved the script. I thought she did, I thought everyone did such a great job. Definitely. I'm curious what your advice is to the younger ones who are watching that, who are trying to figure out like who they are and just having that confidence um, to be okay, you know, with being yourself. What are your top tips? Oh my God, I'm still, I'm, okay. I'm still going through the whole identity thing. I'm trying That's to figure okay. out who I am. I'm trying to do all of that. And I think the only thing I can really say is that there is no one else that's like you and you get to be whoever you want to be. And that's a beautiful thing. And so as long as you have confidence in everything that you're doing and you believe in yourself, you're going to be okay. Which is like very similar to that line from, um, a Cinderella story with Hilary Duff, the Hilary Duff in that one, that when she's like, I believe in myself and I know I'm going to be okay. Like, yes, I love that. That's you like a really it. good through line. Like you should believe in Hilary Duff. <laughs> Everybody put that on your wall, put it on your mood board. Like say that each day. It's so true though. You are yeah. so right. I mean, Sarah, the, you know, storyline in the scripts, like I feel like every episode there was some element of surprise that you just weren't expecting as the viewer. 
as the actress on the show, what were you most surprised by? Ooh, um, that's a great question. I, I actually was so shocked with everything that had to do with Georgia. Like just Georgia is such a, a confident, beautiful, incredible character. And to get to see her backstory and how she became who she is was just extremely fas fascinating. And every time that we got to read a flashback scene, I was just like, oh my God. And especially when I saw it come to life on screen, because, you know, we read the scripts together at a table read. But um, when, when I actually got to see it and I got to see Nikki, who plays young Georgia, I was just blown away. I was like, there's just nothing like this. And, and I, uh, I was so proud. Um, yeah, so that was definitely the biggest shocker is just like seeing how she took trauma and somehow grew from it and it, how it affected her as an adult. And I just, I love that aspect of it. Totally. It was uh, every time I feel like that sort of uh, moment in the show was brought up, like you were just constantly, you know, seeing the evolution and each episode really was so rich and deep in those different ways. I'm curious behind the scenes, what were some of like those kind of moments that people would be surprised to learn that went on in the making of this show? Oh, um, well, <laughs> I think we were all kind of laughing because someone asked if, Nikki and Brienne had met each other and like talked about how they were going to play Georgia. That never happened. Nikki is just, just happened to be like a perfect young Brienne. Um, and so that I think is really interesting. And another thing is that our writers were super, super um, cautious about our thoughts on the script and they were like very much willing to collaborate with us, which I think was really amazing. Um, and if any of us were like uncomfortable with something, they were the first to like sit us down and talk it through. And so I think that that makes it just all the, the better, like all the more amazing because it was just the safest, most comfortable environment. Um, and also we're all like falling in love with each other over five months. Like I, I made some of my closest friends on this show and, and we're all still very close and it's very, very sweet. So it's just been the, like I said, it's been the role of a lifetime. Who would you say that you've gotten the closest to? I easily, I have to say Tony. Um, I spent the most time with Tony. Uh, she doesn't live in Toronto, which literally breaks my heart, but I talk to that girl every effing day. I love her. Um, and I'm talking to her on Monday night. I get to Zoom her. I'm so excited. Uh, but yeah, she, she like came in and just blew me away. And I, I feel so privileged to have watched her um, grow and to have watched her perform because it's it's truly a master class. I think I think she is so incredibly talented, um, and now I get to call her a best friend, which is like ridiculous. It's just crazy how that can happen so quick. Um, yeah, I love. Her. I feel like that's what everyone wants to hear at home is like you see these friendships, you know, on camera, and now they're actually you know transforming to IRL in real life. Like, what more can you ask for? That's all of our dreams. I know, like, yeah. and like. At the end, when we all like get into a crazy fight, like Tony and I were so pissed. Like we were like, we were like, I don't want to be mean to you. And I know for a fact that on the day where like she had to walk through the cafeteria and all of us are kind of like not looking at her, like she felt physically upset, which of course makes sense because just your body like kind of feels that. And like if someone turns away from you, you emotionally feel that whether it's acting or not. Totally. And so like after every take, I had to be like, I love you, man. This is just acting. Like you're my bestie. Like we're fine. <laughs> so that was silly. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is so interesting though, because it's so true. Like you guys are so submersed in your roles. It, it obviously has to feel so real. So I guess, you know, switching that on and off switch, you know, is something that is just part of what comes with the job, but I'm sure nonetheless is definitely a little bit challenging. One of the most memorable scenes of the show had to be when you were performing in Sing Sing, which like we all wish was a real <laughs> film, because you killed it, Sarah. What was the highlight of that experience of making that scene come to life? Thank you so much, first of all. That is so nice. Um, <laughs> yeah, Sing Sing was like maybe one of the coolest things I've ever done in my life. Actually, it definitely was the coolest thing. Um, I couldn't believe that I got to do that. I mean, obviously the funniest part about it is that I'm like jumping into like character and then going to yell at Ginny and then coming back out. And so that was really tough because they didn't do it in parts. Like I assumed that we'd shoot all the like backstage stuff first and then maybe do the onstage. 
but they were like no 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 you're going through the whole thing like you have to go sing and then you have to yell at her and then you have to sing and so it kind of helped because I was like all high on adrenaline um and uh yeah just I feel like the costumes were so incredible they were. And, like, the music was amazing and it was like all original and so I just felt so honored I still cannot believe that someone let me do that and call it my job like <laughs> It was like a dream come true. It was so fun to watch. I mean, that's the thing about just you as an actress. There is so much to you. You can do so many things. And one of you know, other your talents is that you write. You are a screenwriter. You studied that in school. Like, how have you been able to just sort of combine all of your loves of so many different aspects of what it means to be in the entertainment industry and just making it one cohesive career for you? Yeah, I think um, the studying screenwriting has helped me a ton just in the acting, just because I'm learning so much about story and I'm learning about how characters function and how they work together to say certain things about theme. And so I, I feel like the more you know, um, the better you're able to play that one specific role. And so I feel like it's given me a huge leg up. Um, yeah, the writing's amazing and also gives me a level of control because as an actor, you kind of just have to trust the writers and say, like, I'm going to say your words regardless. Um, and so there's not a lot of control there. Um, but when you're writing, you get control. And so I think of my journey. Um, I hope to write in the future and, and see what I can do. Um, yeah, it's good stuff. I love that. Who would you say are your biggest sources of inspiration when it comes to just writing and acting? Writing, for sure, right now, it's Sarah Lampert and Deb Fisher. Uh, Sarah Lampert is the creator of the show, and Deb is the showrunner. Deb has, like, taken me under her wing. She was, like, on Zoom with me once every two weeks and, like, teaching me all these things. She was reading my projects. She was giving me feedback. Like, those two girls are the most supportive, beautiful mentors I've ever had. Um, and so that's been incredible for me. Um, I'd say acting wise, it's interesting because a lot of my acting role models are men just because, uh, there are a lot of men that I look up to that are hilarious and there aren't a lot of female comics that I know who have made it as big as the male comics, which is sad, but we're going to change that. Um, yeah. and, uh, so, but I'd say Rosario Dawson is a huge inspiration for me. Kate Winslet, Hilary Swank, um, and then the, the guys are J.K. Simmons, um, Gary Oldman, Tom Hanks, Leonardo DiCaprio, obviously. I have like a whole notes app, basically. It's just like people I want to work with someday. <laughs> I love that. All of the powerhouses put it out into the universe. And I'm sure a lot of those names are going to be wanting to work with you. I have absolutely no doubt. Something else that I think is super fun is that in 2016, you launched your own collection of poetry called The Art of the Breaking Glass. Oh, Yeah. It's a throwback. What inspired you to launch this? And what are your plans in terms of writing going forward? Um, that was an experiment. I <laughs> feel like I, cause so poetry has always been a huge part of my life. Um, and I've written since I, as long as I can remember, like I probably was like five the first time I wrote a poem. Um, and so I kind of had written all of this poetry, like enough to fill like five books, to be honest. And I just was like, it was 2016 was when I graduated high school. And I was like, I need something to feel finished because there's just never any closure in life and so I figured if I took my favorite poems and I put them in a book and it kind of like told my experience then that would feel like some sort of closure and it did and a lot of people were super super supportive about it and it was wonderful I don't think I'll release poetry book again just because I think poetry is extremely personal um but I love reading other people's poetry books and and will continue to do that for the rest of my life and I'll keep writing because that's just what I love to do, but it's gonna, I feel like it's gonna be more of a personal hobby now. That's and then instead good. with my, with my screenwriting, I hope to share that with the world, obviously. That would be amazing. But I agree, like writing is so therapeutic and it can be really personal, but to have that outlet, I think it's so important for everyone to have something that they feel is like their safe space. And if for you, you know, that's your poetry, it's like, that's awesome. You know, it's great for everyone to do that. Yeah. Well, Sarah, we have some fan questions for you Ooh. that I thought it would be fun to get to. So we're going to start off with the first one. And the question is, if you had to choose only one, which do you prefer, to be an actress or a screenwriter, and why? Hmm, an actor, for sure. I think that uh, that's my first true love, and I think that it's always kind of been in my bones because um, I really like making people feel things and I like um, 
I like being able to jump into different emotions. I think that's really therapeutic. Um, I think I like both for different reasons, but I feel like acting definitely has to take the cake. <laughs> it's your first love. We hear you. Yeah. All right. The next question here is, do you have your own main BFFs in real life? And what's your favorite thing to do with them? That's the most wholesome question ever. Wow. <laughs> I wish I had a main group. I've actually always wanted like, you know, one group of friends that like, you know, I could do everything with. But what's awesome like even better is that I have all these incredible friendships like all over the place it's not just one group it's like all these people that I love so much um and I do tons of different things with all of them I'm I'm super into hiking so this past summer I did like tons of hikes with my friends which was amazing um and safe because we could be outside and separate ourselves from each other yeah um, and so hiking is a huge one I used to get crepes with people when we were allowed to do that um so those are some of my favorite things to do with my friends. I love that. And you're Zooming, like you said, on Monday with Tony. And I feel like that's the whole thing. It's that when you have, you know, those friends who mean something to you, like you find a way to make it work. And I think Absolutely. that's actually a year into the pandemic. What a lot of us, you know, we need that sort of um, inspiration and motivation to just like keep those connections going because people need people, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, the next question here, Sarah. What was your most unforgettable off-camera moment with the Ginny and Georgia cast? That would definitely have to be the first time we went to do karaoke together. I didn't know what to expect. I was like, oh, sometimes you go to karaoke with people and they're like pretending to sing and whatever. They don't go that hard and then it's like weird. These people went so hard with their karaoke. They were screaming, we were laughing, we were singing. It was the best. I think we stayed out till like five in the morning. Like we were just having so much fun together. Um, and that's like one of the most unforgettable nights of okay. my life, really. What is your go-to karaoke song? We need to hear this. <laughs> my go-to karaoke song it changes yes. a lot, but I feel like my sister and I always do like musical theater songs, which is really fun. Um, but, uh, oh God, that's a lot of pressure. I I'm going to have to say Bohemian Rhapsody or Mr. Brightside. Those like really get people going. People get super pumped whenever you play those. So those. <laughs> do such awesome songs well another question that we got for you was obviously sign language was a huge part of your role that's what you um had to communicate with you know in the household of your character of maxine so what was it like learning sign language and being able to incorporate this into your character okay i feel like learning asl was one of the greatest gifts ever and i just like i literally got to learn a new language for this role which is just amazing like who gets to do that for their job um, yeah, the learning process was very amazing. We had coaches and then the, the guy who plays my dad, Chris, um, he's actually deaf in real life. And so he would help us out and, and it just was so amazing. And I, I got to learn so, so much. I still remember so much of it. And then even the, the cast members who didn't have to sign wanted to learn. And so it just became this really inclusive, amazing thing. And I feel like they need to incorporate ASL into school like I feel like people need to learn it it's it's such a beautiful language and and I I'm so obsessed with it and when the pandemic started I took the time to get my beginner ASL course out of the way so I just want to keep learning and and I, I love the language and I'm so lucky that I got to do that how long did it take you to pick it up um I feel like if you ask Jen and Felix they'd say I picked it up pretty quick but I feel like that's only because I was like insanely vigilant about learning it like when I was driving the set, I had to sign Georgia and I would be like G-E-O-R-G-I-A and I'd have to get faster and faster because right. people who sign, oh my God, my grandmother made it onto the live. Okay. Sorry. Yay. Yay. <laughs> oh my, hi. I love you. Um, hi, Sarah's grandma. <laughs> we love that. Um, so yeah, I'd have to be like signing in the car and so I do it really fast and I feel like I got really good at it that way just because I was like extremely excited about it. But um, I feel like we all kind of picked it up pretty fast. I mean, it's, it's a whole awesome. different language, like I said. So I feel like the fact that we picked it up is amazing. No, and it was so wonderful just to see that being represented on screen. That is for sure. But we have another question over here for you, Sarah. What is your favorite Maxine scene? Oh, man, there's a lot. I love so many of Max's scenes. But I think my favorite has to be when Ginny is putting her to bed 
after she's super drunk just because that was the scene with me, Tony, and Felix, and the three of us get along so well. Um, and that was the scene where I had to do improv, which I've said a couple times is like, I'm kind of scared of. Um, and Tony was like super encouraging and was like, you can do this, I believe in you, like blah, blah, blah. And uh, it turned out so well. And that was like a huge moment for me because I was like, wow, like conquered my fear and, and I can literally see that it worked out in a beautiful way that people are really enjoying. And so, I'd say that's definitely my favorite scene. I love that. When you put your mind to something, you get it, right? Put that effort in. Yes. All right. This is another question here for you. If you didn't play Max, which Ginny and Georgia character would you have wanted to play? Oh, that's good. Right? I actually think I'd say young Georgia. I think Nikki killed it. Like, I think she literally knocked it out of the park. I don't think there's anyone on earth who could have done that role better. Um, but like the stuff she got to do and, and like the the emotions that she got to explore, like I, I think that that's a true gift and, and again, once in a lifetime. So I would, I would have died to be able to do that. Certainly, I like that answer. All right, we're getting to some other questions here, you guys. After the Max and Sophie breakup scene, if you, Sarah, um, are part of Ming, what would your advice be to Max? That's a very sweet question. Um, I feel like, I'd be a healthy mix between Abby and Nora because Nora is like the compassionate one who's like understanding the pain and Abby's the angry one who's like, she sucks. Like, don't even think about her anymore. Because I think breakups are super hard and, and I feel like no matter what, you just have to be a good friend and kind of yes. listen to your friend and what they need. And um, so I, I feel like I would be a healthy middle between those two. <laughs> I love it. That is great. This is a question that I also really want to know. What would you like to see happen in the second season of the show? Ooh. Um, okay. Well, just from a Sarah perspective, yeah, I, Sarah want, perspective. <laughs> I want Max and Ginny to be friends again. I want Ming to kind of reunite. I would hate for such powerful female friendships to be ended by freaking Marcus the boy next door so I want them to make amends um absolutely and then I also want to see how Ginny and Georgia kind of come back together and and how they work through obviously all these new aspects of their relationship and if they even can overcome them I think that we're here for it yeah we are here to see this evolve. I feel like everyone wants to know when season two is coming out that's like the million dollar question but <laughs> we are waiting for it all right, this is another question we are getting here, which I think is super cool. If you wrote Max's storyline, where would you take it? Ooh, that is a good question. Um, I have the utmost trust in Sarah and all of the writers. I feel like they're going to do whatever they want with Max, and I feel like I'm going to love it regardless. Um, if it was me, I would want to see Max kind of become less obsessed with herself and a little more selfless and a little more um, compassionate because she's a very loving girl, but it's only on her terms. And I feel like she needs to understand um, how everyone else struggles and she needs to be able to open her mind to that. So I would want to see that arc for her. Well, you said the screenwriters are very collaborative, so you've got to give them some of those tips. We need to see this happen. <laughs> we will see. We will definitely see. All right, we are going to take one more here that is not Ginny and Georgia related. It's just all about you, Sarah. And that is, if you could select three things to take with you to a deserted island, what would they be? Ooh. Um, oh, God. Okay, well, definitely, like, a, a poetry book. Um, either a notebook or an actual poetry book, just so I could keep myself busy. Um, I take a piano because that's pretty much what I spend all my time doing. I love playing piano. Um, I don't know what the third one, can I bring my dogs? Totally. I'd bring my dogs. I, bring my dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even care about how loud. I would do it. <laughs> this is like the perfect packing list. And I'm with you on the piano. There's nothing like uh, playing the piano if you know how to play. So I hear you. Well, Sarah, looking ahead, what can we keep our eyes out for? What do you want people to stay tuned for right before you go? Well, I'm really loving that everyone's loving season one of Ginny and Georgia. I hope that keeps happening. I hope people keep watching and I hope keep, people keep loving it. Um, as for me, I'm just, I'm out here doing my best. I'm, I'm just uh, trying to keep my head up, trying to keep people happy. And that's all I really care about. I love that. <laughs>
are definitely inspiring everybody just through your talent and everything that you're doing. And the show is so awesome. We all, like I have said, want more. And we can't wait to see what you do next. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. This was the sweetest ever. You are so kind. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. You're so sweet. Thank you for being here. Have a great day. And thanks to your grandma for watching, too. <laughs> She's going to be so happy. Thank you. Have I a great one. Take care. Bye. Thank you guys so much for watching Tomorrow by Today. We just had the best time. I mean, Sarah is amazing, you guys. This conversation is going to be saved on our feeds in case you missed some of it. We'll be back here next week with a whole new guest on Friday. I'm Sydney Sadik. Take care, everybody. Have a great weekend.